Conservative. Question three, please, Mr Speaker. Minister. Oh, with permission, Mr Speaker, I will answer questions three and seven together. We have made clear that we, the UK, will defend democracy at the frontier of freedom in Eastern Europe as part of a network of liberty. We are strengthening our partnerships in the region, including on countering disinformation propaganda, on advancing trade and technology, and supporting transparent, accountable political processes through the Westminster Foundation for Democracy, the OSCE, and other institutions. On the 7th of April, my right hon. Friend, the Foreign Secretary, met with NATO foreign ministers and affirmed our commitment to defend and deter threats to the Alliance members in Eastern Europe. Sarah Mr Speaker, now without doubt the UK is leading the way in providing military support to Eastern Europe, from sending uh, manned T2 at Challenger tanks to Poland to in doubling the size of our deployment in Estonia. So can my honourable friend confirm that the UK is working closely with NATO allies to provide all the support that's required to defend democracy in Eastern Europe? Minister. I can assure my honourable friend that the UK will continue to play a leading role within NATO to respond to Putin's brutal and unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. I will myself tomorrow be flying out to NATO to meet our new permanent representative and uh, our allies in that uh, alliance. NATO has also announced the establishment of four additional multilateral battle groups in Bulgaria, Hungary, Romania and Slovakia. And as I say, my right honourable friend, the Foreign Secretary, and NATO foreign ministers have agreed increased support to regional partners to strengthen their resilience and their ability to defend themselves against cyber attack, disinformation, political interference, and other physical and political threats to them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answer there. Uh, we're all moved, I think, by the Ukrainian people's fight to defend their own hard won democratic freedoms, but in the region several countries are still in transition, including Moldova and Georgia, but also NATO allies such as Albania and North Macedonia. Can I ask the Minister then what uh, work the FCDO is engaged in to support reform uh, so that all peoples in Eastern Europe can experience the same democratic freedoms as we have in the UK? Minister. My honourable friend is right that there are many countries uh, in, the, uh, in the immediate vicinity of uh, Ukraine who are suffering pressure. The UK is supporting democratic reform across the South Caucasus, in Moldova and the Western Balkans, including through programmes that support the strengthening of democratic freedoms, uh, uh, to deliver the reform programmes and to reduce corruption. And we're also working with partners in the Western Balkans to support their Euro-Atlantic integration, which, a, which is in itself a stimulus to reform. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Britain's army is smaller than it's been at any time for 200 years, and we currently have plans to reduce personnel for our armed forces by a further 20,000 individuals. Would he agree that if we're going to stand by our allies in Central and Eastern Europe, we need to be in a position where we are militarily strong enough to do so? Yeah. Minister. Uh, the right honourable gentleman will understand that ultimately the question that he poses is more properly answered by uh, defence ministers. However, I can assure him that the close working between uh, the, the, the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, the Ministry of Defence, and our international partners will ensure that the UK remains absolutely a top tier defence uh, country uh, within NATO, and we will continue to, to support our NATO allies and countries in the region to defend themselves against both physical and digital threats. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Many of the countries of Eastern Europe chose to join NATO as soon as they were free to do so because they regard membership of the Defensive Alliance as essential to their security and their democracy. As a result of the Russia's invasion, uh, Finland and Sweden are now currently considering whether to make such an application. The Foreign Secretary has made it clear that the UK would support uh, an application if it was forthcoming. Is the Minister confident that in that event that NATO would agree to admit Finland and Sweden to the NATO alliance? <laughs> Uh, I think the phrase that comes to mind is that when people are free to choose, they choose freedom. Uh, and in this instance, there are a number of countries who are seriously considering joining NATO. And he says uh, fin Finland and uh, Sweden uh, uh, predominantly. Uh, I have uh, no doubt that uh, their application will be considered uh, seriously by NATO member states. They are both uh, serious 
uh, defence players in their own right, and uh, our view would be they would be an asset uh, to NATO. Ultimately, the choice is for the peoples of those countries, but as my right honourable friend, the Foreign Secretary, has said, we would look very favourably upon that application. The Minister Stephen Doherty. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. And it was good to hear the Minister mention the situation in the Western Balkans, where, of course, democracy and stability are under threat, not just from Putin's Russia, but also from those who would seek to generate chaos locally. And therefore, I welcome the sanctions um, that the government has announced against uh, Republic of Serbska leader Dodik and others, uh, an issue we raised back in, in March. Um, could the Minister therefore say what wider discussions he's having with our allies and indeed the special representatives in the region and with Serbia to maintain peace, democracy and stability in Bosnia, in Kosovo and beyond? and to counter Russian and domestic threats to undermine all of those. Uh, the Honourable Gentleman makes some very important points about the fragility of the countries in that uh, region. Uh, we, uh, the Prime Minister has recently appointed Stuart Peach, uh, very experienced, very highly regarded, and he has been very active already in his engagement with the region. Uh, I have met with him uh, uh, already and intend to do so again. I, on uh, my visits to uh, Eastern Europe have uh, discussed some of the uh, challenges with regards to uh, the Western Balkans, and as he has said, we have recently imposed a series of sanctions against the leadership of uh, Republic Srpska, who uh, need to be reminded that the best way forward for that country is through democracy and uh, uh, support for the rule of law. Jane Barry. Mr. Speaker, democracy is ultimately built on hope. In response, to a recent question to the Prime Minister about my suggestion that we fund a new Marshall Plan for Ukraine, funded by seized Russian assets, he responded by saying this is something my government is working on. Could the Minister update the House as to what work is taking place in his department? Minister. Uh, the, uh, my, my right honourable friend makes uh, an incredibly important point. Uh, we are currently supporting uh, both Ukraine and Eastern European countries through our humanitarian support to deal with the initial uh, and immediate pressure, pressures. Uh, what we can do in terms of reparations is ultimately a matter that will need to be done uh, at foreign minister level, both within the UK and internationally. But I take, and I'm sure the government takes this suggestion very seriously indeed. Um, 